in our mind and the things that we are searching for they're sure to see everybody in the Lord's house today. I tell you what, everybody smile. Amen. You smile, I'll feel better, you'll feel better. I mean, enjoy the sunrise service this morning. Boy, God blessed us. Amen. Brother uh, Brian Berg brought a wonderful message. Uh, amen. Uh, First Free Will Church sang. Uh, uh, we had also Fireview Free Will Baptist with us. You can pray for their pastor. He is supposed to bring the message this morning, but uh, wasn't feeling well, so you pray for Brother Brandon Smith, uh, amen. Uh, next year, though, we're going to have sunrise service again, uh, and we're going to be at the uh, Fireview Free Will Baptist Church with First Free Will going home, and Rocky Pass will be all together at the sunrise service next year. Brother Alan Saylor's there uh, at the Rocky Pass Church will be doing the preaching. Our church will be doing the special singing, uh, and probably next year, We'll have a meal, a breakfast. Uh, going home, you just got spared is all I can say this year. Amen. You, you got spared at this, this time. But uh, anyway, I, I tell you, I, it's been a long time since I don't think uh, I've not missed a sunrise service in 
many, many, many years. That's about way uh, with the uh, watch night service. I've not missed the watch night service in many, many years, and I don't want to start now. Hallelujah. But it's good to see you at the Lord's house. Amen. I want to welcome all of our visitors with us this morning. God bless you for being here. We're going to just uh, make an announcement that Jesus is coming. How many believe that? Praise the Lord, and I, I know he is. I want us to stand to our feet this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. May I have the ushers to come around. We'll go ahead and take up our morning tithes and offering. Amen. You give as God directs you in your heart. I'm sure the Lord will bless you as you give today. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm seeing new faces this morning, old faces this morning. Boy, it don't sound good there, Brother Travis. That don't sound good, Sister Nick. Amen. But um, familiar. Thank you, Sister. Thank you. Uh, amen. Boy, I'm telling you, my heart's just overflowing. My heart's just overflowing. But we've got a lot to pray about. Let's pray uh, for Brother Steve and Sister Beth's family. Um, lost, uh, well, I won't say, I shouldn't say lost their mother. Amen. But it went, went to be of the Lord. Amen. Their services will be tomorrow at the Beams. Uh, funerals home, amen, from 10, visiting 10 to 11, service will be at 11, and um, and then, of course, uh, the uh, uh, barrel will be at the Murphy's Chapel. Uh, so if you will, pray for them and lift them up to the Lord today, okay? All right, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the offering today. Lord, we pray that you bless the gift and the giver. Thank you, God, for we have an opportunity, Lord, to honor you through our giving in Jesus' name. All God's people say it. Hallelujah. All right. After all from plate pass you, let's fellowship. Amen in the Lord. Pray. Let me have all the youth, all the youth come, and all the adult choir come. We need all the youth in the adult choir. You, if you can get to him, what they say? Yeah, you need to ask him. And let's do all. All the all the youth in the front, all the youth in the front, right first first two rows right here. Come on, let's fill it up. You just can come on back there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Keep it playing. They're still coming. We might can recruit some more folks. Squeeze together. Squeeze together. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. It'll be page number 19 in the book here. Page number 19. Let me see this fella right here. What's his name? Jed. How, how many remember Jed? He's all right. Let him come say it. You, uh, of course, now I can't hold him the whole service. Huh? <laughs> how many remember Jed uh, when we were shooing the buzzards away last year? Anybody remember that? We walked around the church seven times, and you remember him holding the stick? I got pictures of him holding the stick, shooing the buzzards. Shooing the vultures away. You remember that? Do you? Hallelujah. Let's let him, uh, don't let him, so, yeah, you got him? There right, you go, thank you. Hallelujah. 
All right, let's sing, okay? Sing it for the Lord. On a hill called Cal.
You ain't backslid, have you, boy?
story of his love was the greatest ever told. He loved me to death until the end. When he prayed, Father, forgive him. It's a love that's not measured by height or depth. Even when I, I didn't love him, he loved me to death. How could he love someone like me as undeserving as I could be? You see, I don't deserve his mercies, and I don't deserve his touch. But on a cross with arms wide open, he said, I love you this much. He loved me to death until the end. When he prayed. Forgive them. It's a love that's not measured by height or depth. Cause even when I I didn't love him, he loved me to death. It's a love that's not measured. By height or death, cause even when I, I didn't love him, he loved me to death. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get her on this side over here. Yeah. Told a little bit about it this morning, uh, 2001. They diagnosed her with adenocarcinoma. Um, give her two and a half weeks to live. Back in 2019, they diagnosed her again with uh, stomach cancer. They removed her whole stomach. Last couple of years, it's been uh, it's been a struggle. Uh, she's testifying this morning. Pray that uh, she can uh, these doctors can get this prosthesis back to where she can get back up on her feet. Amen. Uh, but you listen to the words of this song. Amen. As she sings it, it's always been a blessing we're celebrating the resurrection now it's altars open if you need a need to pray you don't have to wait on man to call you no. well mary came unto the tomb of jesus the stone was moved and Two sinners at the fall. 
don't wait until his bride has been completed. Don't wait until you hear him say it's too late. really going to practice now okay we uh, just went over this for church I will mess it up so don't you you ladies come in on it amen but it's a blessing to me uh, goes a little bit of what the Lord's allowed me to gonna allow me to preach if he allows us to this morning uh, <clears throat> come on in and be singing don't, don't let me alone okay amen <laughs> The first day of the week came Mary Magdalene. Early while it was yet dark, and to the place where he'd been laid, she saw the stone was rolled away. He's not here; they've taken him away. So Peter and John did run. Just to see what they had done With the body of the master who had died And while John was stooping down Saw the linen clothes Peter found And when they went in This was their reply He's coming back It's not over Take his bride away He's coming back He left the sign that told them And I thank God that the napkin is still folding So on a hill after 40 days Jesus said I'm going away I'm going to prepare a place so you can come and dwell as he ascended up and out of sight there appeared to men in spotless white saying this same Jesus he's coming again someday he's coming back it's not over he's coming back to take his bride away he's coming back he left the sign that told him and I thank God that the napkin is still folding yes I thank God that the napkin is still Thank you. I appreciate that, brother. Hallelujah. Well, I appreciate my family. Amen. My, um, 
How many have your Bibles this morning? Amen. Like to lift them up. Give God a good wave offering with the Holy Scripture. Embarrass your flesh. Love your Bible. Never be ashamed of the Bible. Amen. I, I seen something. Uh, how many's heard the? Uh, I think it's S. M. Lockridge. Um, old color preacher. Amen. They hit he the old saying. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. How many's ever heard that? I know it's not Friday right now, but I sure thought a lot about it on Friday. Amen. So I'd like for you to cut the, if you will, grab the lights. If you will, grab these lights here, if you don't care. Just for a minute, I want you to look at something for a preach. good to be reminded what Jesus went through and what he paid so we may have right to eternal life amen it's Friday Jesus is praying Peter is asleep Judas is betraying but Sunday's coming, it's Friday. Pilate's struggling, the council is conspiring, the crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying, Peter is denying, but they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling and his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross and then they raised him up next to criminals it's Friday but let me tell you something Sunday's coming it's Friday yeah bless your the disciples are questioning what has happened to their king and the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved but they don't know it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday, Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming.
I think we ought to give the Lord a hand, amen, for what he went through for me and you, amen. I'm telling you, friend, I know this might not be totally historical and everything that you saw, but I'm going to tell you 100% it was more than you saw. Amen. 100% more than what you saw. If you got your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to the book of John, chapter 20, this morning. John, chapter 20. I'm not going to keep you too long by the help of the Lord. Uh, amen. Um, not to just give you a few thoughts today. If you're here this morning and you're lost, you don't have to leave lost. And let me tell you, if the crucifixion of Christ don't bother you, amen, if John 3, 16 don't grab you like it ought to, you know, sometimes we'll let these scriptures and we'll let the crucifixion, amen, we'll let these things, amen, just become commonplace to us anymore. But I'm telling you, we need to be reminded what Jesus done on Calvary's cross, amen. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless us, give us wisdom and knowledge as we try our best to preach the word. And all God's people say it. John chapter 20, let's look at verse number 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him. And Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the the sepulchre and see if the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself you may be seated may the good lord add his blessings to the reading of the scripture how many gonna pray for the preacher even based by the way of introduction this morning, one had said that uh, in the Bible days when somebody had died, it was the duty of a family member to close the eyes and kiss the cheek, amen, of the death or the one that had died. When Christ died, we know that Joseph of Arimathea, amen, went to Pontius Pilate, amen, and begged the body of the Lord Jesus, amen. Then they had taken him down. Uh, they had to take him down from the cross, amen, which was, wasn't really an easy chore if you'll think about it amen and think about what they had to go through uh, first they had to rig some kind of a ladder up amen and climb up that ladder to the side of the cross amen and then they had to take uh, and pull his hands over uh, off the uh, the nails that bound him there there was no way that they could get the spikes out of the wood amen or uh, from the angle that they were in while he was hanging on the cross and, and that, not with his, with his hands but in between the wood and the nail head and once the hands were loose amen they would allow the body of Jesus to sag into a sheet and would then remove his feet from the nails amen from the nail that had had, to, had them together in the same manner and then they'd take the body of Jesus amen they took it to a new tomb of course Joseph of Arimathea and they had prepared and, uh, his body amen for the burial uh, no doubt they wrapped it in white linen amen they, some suggested they probably folded his arms amen and and the glory to God on his chest and they closed his eyes and probably probably kissed his cheek amen and, and placed a napkin about his face amen and then amen no doubt they walk away from the tomb and no doubt they would be in silence so that they could hear the sounds of sadness and maybe crying maybe you could hear some weeping amen as they were thinking maybe well it's all over now Three days passed like an eternity. Amen. I mean three days all the demons of hell rejoiced. Amen. For three days Satan and the, uh, the forces of darkness thought they had won. I mean death thought that they had had the Savior. I mean for three days the Jewish leaders, amen, as well as the Roman government, amen, congratulated themselves on a, on a brilliant scheme. They thought that they had overtaken and, and the Savior had died and he did. But in our text this morning, amen, you listen to me, hallelujah, on the third day, amen, something wonderful, 
and something miraculous happened as God the Father said to God the Holy Ghost it's time you go get him amen and when God the Father spoke it amen the stone rolled away amen from the sepulcher and guess what happened and up from the grave he arose amen victoriously over death hell and the grave if that don't excite us nothing excites us preacher why do you get so excited I'm thankful I don't serve a dead God amen I serve a risen Savior this morning oh you listen to the preacher amen in our text Mary comes first to the empty tomb amen she sees the stone rolled away and it frightens her and so she runs to get Peter and John. They run together to the, to the tomb. John outruns Peter. And when they got there, he looked inside. Amen. And saw those grave clothes lying in disarray. Then Peter arrived. And as, as just we would expect Peter to do, he went right in. He also saw the linen clothes lying there. But there was something unusual about that scene when Peter went into the sepulcher. When Peter went into the tomb, he didn't just see. Amen. The linen clothes lie. Amen. Listen, everything in God's word, you remember this. Everything in God's word is important. And this is no exception. Amen. Amen. But what are you saying, preacher? The Gospel of John tells us that the napkin which was placed over the face of Jesus was not just thrown aside with the other grave clothes. The Bible takes an entire verse to tell us that the napkin was folded in a place by itself. Amen. I don't know about you, but that excites my soul. Amen. Listen, in order to understand the significance of the folded napkin, you you have to understand a little bit, a little bit about Hebrew, Amen. Tradition of that day, the folded napkin had to do with the master and the servant. You listening to me? It had to do with the master and the servant. When the servant set the dinner table for the master, he made sure that it was exactly the way the master wanted it. And the table was furnished perfectly. And then the servant would wait just out of sight until the master had finished eating. And the servant would not dare touch that table until the master was finished. You listen to me. Now, if the master was, wasn't done eating, here's what would take place. He would rise from the table. He would wipe off his fingers or wipe off his hands. He might would wipe his face, his mouth, maybe his beard, and would wad up that napkin and toss it on the table. The servant would then know to clear the table for those days. Amen. For in those days, they wadded, uh, the wadded napkin meant, I'm done. But if the master got up from the table and he neatly took his napkin and he folded that napkin and placed it aside his plate, the servant would not dare touch the table because the servant knew that the folded napkin meant, I'm not finished yet. Hey Amen. The folded napkin meant, I'm coming back. Y'all excuse me just a minute, amen. Well, you ought to give God the glory right there, amen. Hey, I'm glad, amen, he's not done. Hallelujah. Amen. Then after three days, hey, praise the Lord. Hey, Peter and John, amen, had walked with the Lord. They had watched as he opened the blinded eyes. He caused the deaf ears to hear. They watched as he raised, amen, dead bodies back to life. Up then they watched him die. And as they watched, all of their hopes, all of their dreams, amen, uh, seemed like it was shattered. All they could think was, it's over. It's over. And for three long days, they were in the depths of despair. The lights of their souls had become dim. Then after three days, they saw an empty tomb. Amen. Not only did they see an empty tomb, but they saw a folded napkin. In that empty tomb. And God spoke to them in their being and said, Hallelujah. I'm glad God, you hear what I said? And God spoke in their being and said, He's not finished yet. Amen. He is coming back. Hallelujah. In John 19, 30, Jesus said just before he died, amen, we heard that on Friday night at the cross from the cross. He cried, it is finished. It is finished. 
I'm going to preach to you on the subject this morning by the help of the Lord. The napkin is still folded. Amen. The napkin is still folded. You say, what do you mean it's finished, preacher? Amen. Number one, this morning I want to submit to you that he's not finished saving souls. Amen. Hey, I'm mean, glad, amen, that you're saved this morning. Amen. I'm not talking about I think so. I ain't talking about I hope so. I mean, no, without a shadow of a doubt, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, I'm glad it's more than just a game to me. I'm glad, amen, it's an everyday walk in my heart. And in my life, I want you to know that he's not finished saving. So you say, preacher, I've been too bad. I've done too much. I've went too far. I got news for you, friend. Hey, God, hey, the devil didn't send you to this church service this morning. You say, it's Easter. It sure is. And we serve a risen Savior. I want you to know, amen, today, amen, that he's a calling. He's a bidding. Hallelujah. He done what he done on the cross that you might have right to heaven and eternal life. I'm telling you, God's not, hey, he's not finished saving souls. Amen. That folded napkin says, amen, he's not finished saving that sinner. John 3, 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. Let me tell you something, friend, Buddha ain't going to get it. Muhammad ain't going to get it. Hey, Krishna ain't going to get it. I don't, hey, let me tell you something. There ain't but one name under heaven given among men. Whereby He said, whereby ye must be saved. Anybody know that name? His name is Jesus. Amen. I've been knocking on doors lately. Amen. Uh, trying to get, get folks to the house of the Lord. I mean, man, they, they'll tell you all kind of things. Well, I don't believe that's something I can know. You can't know 100% sure right now uh, that heaven's your home. It'll be when I meet the big guy. First of all, he might he, he is the head guy. Amen. But he ain't the big guy. He's God Almighty. Amen. Now, let me just say this. How many know the, how many know that your salvation's secure this morning? Amen. You can know it today. Listen, for that reason, listen, for that reason, there are two kinds of people in this room today, in this congregation. And the distinction is not black and white. The distinction, amen, is not educated and uneducated. Amen. The distinction, amen, is not Republican or Democrat. Now somebody needs to shout Amen. Hey, 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 it's not rich or poor. Hey, man, are you with the preacher this morning? Hey, man, listen, hey, hey, what are you saying? In the eyes of God, there are two kinds are here. Hey, man, listen, that those that are already, already been saved are those that had need to be saved. Hey, man, there are many people, hey, man, have the mistaken idea, hey, man, that good people are, are saved and only bad people need to be saved. Certainly bad people need to be saved, and so, so do good people need to be saved. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You say, preacher, I'll say, now as a little boy. The question is, amen, are you still right with God? Amen. Somebody help the preacher today. You say, I got saved now I was 13. Amen, did you get saved or did you get saved because he, you thought your mama told you to get saved? Amen, I had a Sunday school teacher one time said, I got saved and got baptized when I was 13. Amen, why did he do that? Because his mama, amen, encouraged him to do it. Let me tell you something. It ain't hard to know if you're right with God or not. Hallelujah, I ain't perfect. Glory, thank you. I ain't perfect, Paul. Amen, but thank God I know my name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning, amen. The Bible says, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. In God's eyes, there's no difference. There's no big sinner and there's no little sinner. Do you know sin is sin in God's eyes? Amen. Hey, the murderer, amen, that's serving a life sentence, amen, in prison. Amen. Listen, it's still no different what you, if you're here this morning and you're lost, you're no different than that murderer. Whoopee. Yes, sir. You're still, you're, you're still a sinner, amen. In God's eyes, I'm as guilty of breaking God's holy standard as was Hitler, amen, or Bin Laden. In God's eyes, amen, they're all, hey, they're sinners who have been forgiven like me and sinners who have not. Oh, listen, Ben, glory to God. And if you're here and you're not been saved, you can be. You better make full proof of your ministry this morning. Man, we got so many people, amey, that just... Hey, it's a game to them. 
Amen. Listen, in God's eyes, there's no difference. Years ago, the great evangelist Billy Sunday, how many's ever heard of Billy Sunday? The great evangelist Billy Sunday was preparing to go into a certain city, amen, to do a major cru crusade. He wrote ahead of time to the, to the mayor of the city and said, would you please send me, amen, the addresses or names of the people in your area who seriously, amen, uh, need sp spiritual help. Amen. To Sunday's surprise, to Billy's surprise, uh, the mayor, mayor sent him the phone book. Yeah, the mayor sent him the phone book. That mayor knew something. Amen. He understood that we all need spiritual help. There ain't nobody here today, even if you're saved, can't move up a little bit closer to the Lord. I'm glad the napkin's still folding, and I'm glad he's still saving souls. Secondly, let me say the napkin's still folded. And he's not finished reclaiming backsliders. Amen. How many thank God for second chances? Amen. Anybody in here would say, I thank God for a fifth chance? <laughs> you know all I can keep going. I, anybody thank God for a tenth chance? <laughs> You said, preacher, that just shows how ignorant we are. Amen. That just shows us how human that we are. But I'm thankful. Hallelujah. You listen to this preacher. Amen. A few days, amen, before Christ died, he took his disciples aside. Amen. And told them what was going to happen. He more or less said, I'm going to be betrayed. I am going to be arrested. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be crucified. Amen, Brother Keith. Then he looked at his disciples and, and really said something like this. Amen. Are you going to desert me too? He said, in other words, he said, will you also go away? The apostle Peter rose up typically, amen, as Peter would do, amen, more or less. And he more or less said, not me, Lord. Not me, Lord. Lord, I, I, I don't know about the rest of these guys, but you can count on me, Lord. But in Matthew 26, 33, amen, he, old Peter said, yet will I never be offended. Can't you imagine, amen, what, uh, the, the expression on Christ's face, amen, when Peter said that? I could just imagine Jesus maybe shaking his head, amen, as Peter said, I, I'm not going to betray you. I'm not going to uh, deny you, Lord. I, I don't know about you, amen, uh, amen. Uh, but you know what? <laughs> he knew Peter was going to deny him three times. Before that cock crowed, then the Roman soldiers came to arrest the Lord Jesus with the swords and shields, amen, and the spears. And, then, and courage welled up in Peter's heart, no doubt. And he, he took, out one of his sword, or, 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 took out his sword out of his sheath. And he even swung it at him. Amen. Now, I don't know if he's aiming. Amen. If that, if that one's here or not. Amen. But all I know is he cut off the ear of one of them. Amen. Glory to God. What happened? Hallelujah. I tell you what happened. I don't know if that ear fell off or if Jesus just touched. All I know is the Bible says that Jesus touched. Amen. And that ear was put back on. I don't know if he reached down and got the ear and held it back up there. But all I know, he restored that man's ear. Now, let me just say this. I don't know about you, but if I was a Roman soldier that day. <laughs> And the man's ear just got cut off, and the Lord hey, grabs that ear, whatever he does, and touches the sides of that man's head. Glory to God, now the ear's reattached. Uh, is anybody getting where I'm going this morning? Amen. Amen. <laughs> if I were a Roman soldier that day, and I saw that miracle, I'd have changed sides. I'd have said, hey, fellas, I came with you, but I'm leaving with him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. They arrested Jesus. And subjected him to the scourging. Amen. You listen to me. I'm talking about pure torture. What this little glimpse you saw a few minutes ago. Hey man, it's not a hire. Did you hear this preacher? It's nothing what our Savior bore for me and you. Hey man, listen. I while that while all that was happening, Peter's courage probably turned to denial. A young lady approached and said, I know you. I, you're with him. I'm just sat living a little bit. And this same man who had, had just stood in the, at the entire Roman army had now backed down and said, I don't know this man. I, I don't know who he is. Amen. Another came up and said again, he denied Christ. Yet another, amen, says that his accent or his talk, be, in other words, it, it betrays him. In other words, he, he is a Galilean. You are one of his disciples. 
And he not only denied Christ that third time, but he cursed. Did you hear me? I'm talking about the one that says, I'll never deny you, Lord. I'll go where you want me to go. Denied him three times. Could you imagine? As the rooster, he made immediately that cock crowed. Peter remembered the words of Jesus. You remember that scripture? Amen. And he looked off in the distance and there stood Jesus and their eyes caught one another. Could you imagine, amen, the sadness and the sorrow in the eyes of Jesus? No doubt it broke him, broke his heart. The Bible says, amen, that, uh, that he went out and wept bitterly. In three days he lived in shame and guilt and misery realizing he had denied the Lord. Let me read you Mark's account. Mark chapter 16, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had uh, brought sweet spices that they may come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us, us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting at the right side, on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he, and he said unto them, Be not affrighted, ye, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. I want you to notice that. Tell his disciples and Peter. Some of you ain't got it. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Can't you see in in your, can you see it in your mind's eye? These ladies run to the disciples to tell them the good news. He's alive. Oh, he's alive. He's risen from the dead. He's alive. He ain't there. The stone's been rolled away. Can't you see Peter in your mind in the corner of the room shocked? Saying, what? What did you say? It's true. Yes, he, he said to meet him in Galilee. And Peter, who had been in the depths of depression, I don't know about you, I guarantee you he was in the depths of depression for three days. Stunned at the reality of the resurrection and probably almost encouraged as once again plagued in his mind of how he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. And it dragged him right back into that depression. And thought, surely he doesn't mean me to come. Won't you listen to what I'm trying to say this morning? Peter might have thought, surely he doesn't mean me to come. I denied him three times. I cursed and I swore, surely, surely he doesn't mean me. And the lady said, oh, Peter, by the way, he mentioned you by name. I don't think some of you are listening. His disciples, go tell his disciples and Peter. Hey, Peter, he mentioned you by name. We ought to, we ought to get Baptocostal right there just a little bit. <laughs> Praise the Lord and just shout it out. Praise the Lord. How many know he called you by name this morning? <laughs> well, thank the Lord. Yes, he mentioned you by name. He did. Well, what did he say? He said, go tell his disciples and Peter. Amen. Why did Jesus want to see Peter? To rebuke him? No. He didn't want to see Peter to rebuke him. Amen, Brother Travis. Hey, glory to God. He wanted to restore Peter. Hallelujah. And one of the sweetest scenes you'll ever see in Scripture is Peter and Jesus coming together and Jesus hugging him and saying, Peter, do you love me? Hallelujah. No, not Peter, are, are you going to cuss me anymore? Not, not Peter, are you, going to see, are you going to curse me? Are you going to swear anymore? No. He said, do you love me? Do you love me? Listen, if you're here today, amen, you know you're a backslider. 
If you're here today and you know that you're not right with God, you listen to this preacher. Let me ask you, where, hey, was there a time when you were right with him? Hey, man, you see, the real question is not are you going to drink anymore? Are you going to curse anymore? Hey, man, the real question today is do you love him? If you love the Lord, you'll quit your drinking. If you love the Lord, you'll quit your cursing. Best thing that ever happened to me, Brother Keith, is when God saved me. Hey, man, man, I didn't. Hey, when I was growing up, hey, I wasn't raised around cursing. Hey, man, but I, hey, in school, you'll hear everything. Hey, man, you've heard my little story before, and I was about the fifth grade. I'll never forget, I could call a name right now. Lives in McDowell County. You'd know him. I ain't going to call his name. Man, that's all he'd do. He'd take God's name in vain, take God's name. Man, I thought I'm. I thought I was hot stuff, man. I thought, I'm going to run around with this crowd. Man, I started taking God's name in vain. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I wasn't right with the Lord then, but it still didn't feel right. Taking God's name in vain. Man, I'd cur. How many remember Miss Metcalf at Nebo? Some of you, I'm telling her age. Raise your hand real high. Remember? Remember? Amen. Amen. Miss Metcalf. Boy, she come to me. She set me and that boy down. She's in the lunchroom. She said, I'm going to tell you something, Jeff. She said, if you don't hush that mouth, I'm going to go tell your mama and I'm going to tell your daddy. And I thought right then, it's done. Because daddy kill me. Daddy gets wind of this, mama kill me. You say, your mama ain't got one leg. Yeah, but she always told me this. Amen. You ever run from me, Jeff? I'll catch you one day. What a glory to God. You, you hear me? But thank God when I got saved. Amen. You know them nasty words didn't come out no more. When I got saved. Hallelujah. You say you're trying to live a perfect life. The Bible says to strive to be perfect, perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. But let me tell you something. We're all sinners saved by grace. Amen. But let me tell you this. We're still in this flesh. And I hey, the Bible says that Paul, amen, that wasn't it Paul that died daily? Preacher, you perfect? I ain't perfect. I have to come to this altar just like you do. And thank God he forgives me. Cecilia, aren't you glad for third and fourth and fifth and tenth and fifteenth and twentieth chance? God delivered that girl. Hey Amen. I don't mean to bring up your past. Hey Amen. But I remember. You don't remember. But I remember. Hey Amen. Down on Fireview Road. Hey Amen. Got a call. Hey Amen. And there's down there. You remember that Helen? Went down there. And I, you, you was laying in the ditch. I won't forget that. But you know what? Hey Amen. Listen. She ain't in the ditch this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh. You say preacher. What changes that? I tell you what changes. His name is Jesus. Hey Amen. It wasn't Peter. You're going to cut me again it was do you love me do you love me Amen. Travis he brought you out a horrible pit didn't he drugs alcohol marijuana it's all of it wasn't it Travis what happened to you hallelujah <laughs> Hey, Brother Jason back there on the back pew stand up hey man stand up how many days is it 98 days. Amen. Hallelujah. He had took the alcohol away. Can I get a witness right there? You see that suit he's got on? That's beer money. Am I right? <laughs> you say, preacher, what does that? I'll tell you what does it. His name is Jesus. And until you surrender and surrender all, 98 days. I can always count on him telling me how many days it is. Because when Jesus does something, Brother Keith, he does it. I'm going to close in a minute. You say it's after 12. Let me tell you something. The steakhouse closed here a long time ago. Amen. Amen. The napkin is still folded. He's still saving souls. Can you go to the piano? He's still reclaiming backsliders. Listen, if you're away from God right now, you know what you need to do? Bring your sins to the cross of Calvary. You know what Jesus do? You know, I heard a story about a little boy. I'm going to read you this, and I'm going to try to close. I heard a story. A little boy had done something very naughty. You know what that was? I don't know. But to him, it's very naughty. His mother punished him. 
he was afraid his mother was still angry at him. And in the kitchen, there was a chalkboard on the wall where they wrote, wrote down phone messages. And when no one was around, he wrote on that chalkboard, Dear Mom, if you forgive me, please wipe this out. <laughs> he went to his room, Travis. And about an hour later, he came back. <laughs> and to his surprise and joy, that whole chalkboard had been completely erased. <laughs> you know, you know what'll happen is this. If you're if you're if you're away from God right now, amen, bring it to the cross. You know what Jesus will do? He'll rub them out. Hey, he'll rub them out. Hey, he just won't take one and rub them out. <laughs> I'm glad he'll take them on. He'll rub them out. He'll raise your sin. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to beg you to this, this morning. Don't wait till it's too late. If you're here today and you need to be saved, you need to come back to God, I want you to remind you, amen, there's a coming another, uh, amen, uh, supper, amen, it's going to take place. It's called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. Amen. You listen to this preacher, amen? And I believe at that Marriage Supper of the Lamb, I don't know, I'm just going to imagine, Brother Keith Webb, at the end of that supper, now I don't know how long we're going to eat. We may be eating for a long time. But if there's coming an end to that Marriage Supper of the Lamb, could it be that <laughs> at the end of it, Jesus will stand up at the table? And he's going to wipe his hands. And he's going to wipe his fingers, wipe his mouth, wipe his beard off, get all cleaned up. And he's going to take that nap and he's going to wad it up. <laughs> hey, he ain't going to fold it this time. <laughs> he's going to fold, hey, he's going to wad it up. He's going to throw it aside to say it's over. It's finished. It is finished. Amen. It's over. I don't know about you. I'm glad I know him this morning. And if you don't know him, you can know him. Let's stand at our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. Whether you're a good person, whether you think you're a good person or a bad person, you need to be saved. Oh, listen to me. Today, Jesus is calling you home. The napkin's still folded. Maybe you're here and you're Christian. You say, I'd just like to come to the altar and just, just call on him and say, God, give me strength. Give me help. Oh, God, help me to, to start off this, this Easter Sunday to do right, to be right. Let me tell you something. I have to come to the altar many times and make full proof, amen, of my ministry in the Lord. Jesus loves you. Can you sing a stanza of that? I would appreciate it. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, move I pray come on come on hey Christian hey, you just want to get closer to the Lord say God help me bring it to him bring it to him come on come on come on don't wait on the person beside you there's, there's people coming don't wait on people beside you just step out just step out come on say I'm going to do better I want God to strengthen me I want God to strengthen my health I want God to strengthen my marriage I want God to strengthen my hey, God help me. Give me strength spiritually. Give me strength physically. Bring it. Bring it. You say, preacher, I've been many times. I know that. But you know what? I have to go more than just one. Hey man, I have to go more than just one. Bring it to him, would you? Let God forgive you. Feel the peace in your heart. And it ain't hey, you ain't doing it because of the person beside you. You come because God has dealt with Kneel your spirit this morning. Is there a burden you bear that's got you battered and bound? You're struggling for strength. You long to lay it down. Don't take another step, just kneel where you stand. Lay it at the cross and take the hammer in your hand. Nail it to the cross, 
get it under the blood drown your pain and every stain in the mercy for love nail it to the cross find hope and forgiveness kneel at the tree and walk away free nail it to the cross nail it to the cross get it I need you to pray, Christian. Find hope and forgive. Look at these little kids that come up here and pray. Kneel at the tree and walk away. What keeps you from coming? Nail it to the cross. You say, but preacher, I've been many times. That's why that's good. Nail it to the cross. God's trying to get somebody's attention this morning. Kneel at the tree and walk away. But all God will do is deal with your heart. He's not going to force you. will this morning, I'd like for you to be seated just for a moment, if you would. Out of the book, I'd like my deacons, if they would, to come around, please. My deacons to come around. Thank you for being in the Lord's house. Somebody said, preacher, it's late. It's later than you think it is. First Corinthians chapter number 12, excuse me, chapter number 11. I'm going to read some verses of scripture like for my deacons just to stand here just for a moment. Just to stand here for a moment. Um, First Corinthians chapter number 11. And verse number 20. When you come together therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating everyone taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. I'll tell you what, fellas. You might as well sit down a minute. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see Brother Norman. Amen. Continue praying from the Brother Deacon. Amen. May God continue to strengthen his body. I'm not going to preach it all this morning, but you listen to what the Bible says. You've got to listen real carefully. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, pay very close attention. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. What we're getting ready to do this morning is not to be taken lightly. This morning, I know there's a lot of questions. We've got a lot of young children here. I, it's not, it's all, not up to me. I'm leaving that up to the parent, whether they partake of this or not, okay? So it's your decision to your children. You say, well, I don't want to hurt the little feelings. It ain't about their feelings. They'll get over it. 
for my help, preacher. But I want you to notice, and I'm going to, I never do a service like this unless I explain. You don't take this cup unworthily. If you're not right with God, listen, the Bible says here in this verse, amen, you bring damnation to himself. And because of that in verse 30, some are weak and some are sickly. And it says that many sleep, a lot of them died because they took and partook of this unworthily. You say, well, I've done it unworthily before, preacher, and I'm still here. It might mean you might not be here after you do it unworthily here. Somebody says there's a lot of people, that, there's some that take open communion. That's what we call open communion. There's some people do closed communion. It's only for the membership of the church. But I always give the congregation, amen, the opportunity to do what you feel led to do. You say, well, you're putting us on the spot. Let me tell you something, friend. Amen. I'd rather, I'd rather let that plate pass me this morning. Did you hear me? But I, I believe God would rather you bow your head and examine yourself. I'm going to give you an opportunity to examine yourself this morning. Okay, so we're getting ready to take the Lord's Supper. Now, in this fruit of the vine, and that's what it is, it's not fermented wine. No place in the Word of God. Catholics have it wrong. I need help right here. Catholics have it wrong. God does not contradict His Word. This is, and if you want to read the four Gospels, it's the fruit of the vine. He says the fruit of the vine or the cup. You know what the fruit of the vine is? That's that freshly squeezed grape. Yes, it is referred to as wine, but it's not. The bacteria process has not taken place. And it's not rotted. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not fermented wine. And for people that say that Jesus drank wine, they're misled. Amen. It wasn't fermented wine. If it had been, it would, Jesus would be a liar and his word would be untrue because he tells us in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 1, amen, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Jesus didn't drink wine. He took the fruit of the cup, the fruit of the vine, or the cup. So what you're getting this morning, amen, is just the fruit of the vine. And you're getting a piece of unleavened bread. Everybody with the preacher? And what this does, amen, now listen, this is symbolic. Catholics believe after the priest blesses this, their communion, that that wine, quote, actually becomes the blood of Jesus. After that priest blesses, amen, that bread, it actually becomes the body of Christ. This don't actually become that this morning, but it's a symbolic that we're taking Christ's blood and we're taking his body that was broken. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we've got part in it. It's just like when I got saved and I went to the creek and got baptized. I was telling this world, that old man's dead, and the new man's resurrected forth. So here's what we're going to do. Would you come to the piano just for a moment, like for your head to be bowed? I'm giving you a time to examine yourself. This altar's open. If you need to come to the altar, I mean, you can come and pray. But listen, make full proof of thy ministry. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, I love you. to come 
If you will, prepare the table, and if you would, distribute the cup. Now, in the cup, we it's not like old traditional. You've got the wafer on top. That's one piece of cellophane that you tear off. Don't tear them. You can get the bread, but don't eat or partake till we do it all together, okay? One go to the other end, Dad, on the other. As you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. In verse 23, or excuse me, yes. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. 
which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your broken body. When I say that, Lord, there was not one bone broken, but because and by your stripes, Isaiah said, that we're healed. Thank you, dear Lord, that we have an opportunity today to show the Lord's death and the burial and the resurrection in taking this wafer of unleavened bread, dear Lord, is a symbol of your body. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless as God we take and continue to take part in you. In Christ's name, amen. You can take the bread. You can prepare the cup. The Bible says in the verse number 25, In the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we take the cup, and Lord, as we know it's a symbol of thy blood, we're thankful, God, that you shed your blood, every drop of blood, that we may have right to heaven and eternal life with you. And God, as we partake, God, of the fruit of the vine this morning in the symbol of your blood, I thank you, God, for the day you saved me. And God, I thank you, dear God, that with the, you said without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. And God, we know it's the blood that washed away our sin. And God, we thank you again for this cup. Bless it as we partake of your blood in Christ's name. Amen. You can take if you would like and leave the cup in the holder on your pew and we'll take those up later. Amen. Well, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to what the Bible says. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. I think it's important that that's one of the ordinances of a church. Amen. Hallelujah. It's been a long time since we've done it. We need to, I know we've done it every year at the Yancey Street, but sometimes now, if we're not careful, it can become ritual. And I don't want it to become ritual because it ain't ritual. Hallelujah. I want it to be special to us. Humble ourselves. Amen. Before the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Well, ain't God good? How many enjoyed Sunday's Easter service? We got, we got service tonight. We don't cancel our service. Amen. Sometimes we'll transfer it, but we don't cancel on Easter. We want you to come back tonight and be with us. I want to say I appreciate all of our visitors being in the Lord's house this morning. All right? And uh, hallelujah. We're going to dismiss in a word of prayer. Let's all stand to our feet, if you will. Adam Jolly, would you dismiss us in the word of prayer?